Over the past two years, we brought you on a journey to the moon and beyond. Our mission to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 13 mission to the moon. To honor Biloxi's astronaut with a statue sculpted by Mary Ott Trimmel Davidson. We brought you the story of Biloxi's astronaut, Fred Hayes, lunar module pilot for Apollo 13, and all the drama that unfolded over those fateful days in April 1970. The artist, Mary Ott Trimmel Davidson, who was commissioned by the city of Biloxi to create the statue to be dedicated in the honor of Fred Hayes and his historic achievement. Today, February 13th, 2022, we complete our mission, just 323 years since D'Arbeville first landed on these shores. The early morning sun rises here at Lighthouse Park. Bellius Welding and Ironworks arrive to erect the Fred Hayes statue. On the sidewalk, Bay St. Louis artist Lucinda Linton is putting the final touches on an out-of-this-world mural. I stopped to talk to the artist about this striking uh, design. Designing the moonwalk. <laughs> this is the moonwalk. This is the moonwalk. Now, uh, it looks like you're putting woodpeckers on the... Yeah, that's our secret surprise as the woodpeckers, because his nickname was Pecky, from him dressing up as a woodpecker in a play in, in grade school. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all of this other paint work, is this your work? Yes, yes. All of it. <laughs> and if you don't mind, what, what is your name? I'm Lucinda Linfit. Oh, Lucinda. Yeah. You and I did a, an interview. Oh, yeah. That's remember? What I remember. With the uh, I knew murals. You look familiar. <laughs> well, you dressed a little different. Yeah. I know, yeah. Paint and I have to <laughs> wear my paint clothes for sure. I, I go through a lot of, we're in a lot of clothes. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> So what do we have represented here along the sidewalk? Um, this is all just different form. Some of it's actual formations um, from lunar maps, and some of it's just from my imagination. But the closest to the statue, that's um, that particular formation is where the Apollo 13 landed, or uh, was supposed to land, if everything would have went right on the moon. So made sure and did that, and then I did the Apollo 13 seal um, mission insignia and. Uh, there's different big landmarks that I did from the moon, like um, over there it looks like a big sun. It's actually Tycho, the biggest crater on the moon. Well, this is quite a, you know, a big mural. How long have you been working on it? Just since last week. Well, and, you covered uh, a lot of ground. Yes. Or I should say a lot of the moon. <laughs> yes. It's a big, big project. This would be your biggest mural then, high in size. I think, square foot? I think so. I don't know. I hadn't figured up the square footage yet, yeah. but yeah. And I think, I think the, uh, the folks should be reminded that uh, you did the mural down at the Maritime Museum. Yes. The uh, coast shall rise again. Yes. <laughs> and you've got some other ones that you've created. Where you been uh, painting? I have, I have one at Neon Moon in um, Ocean Springs, and I'm supposed to have one installed um, from the Gulfport Main Street Association. Uh, any time now. It, it, I finished it in my house. It was portable, so they could put it wherever they would like. So hopefully we'll see that popping up really soon too. Um, I have been all over the place painting now. Uh, I did an electrical box in Bay St. Louis for the wall-to-wall -wall mural contest too uh, at, the, at the end of last year. And I noticed uh, some of the techniques you're using here. You got like this little paint roller here. Yes, I'm kind of doing watercolor to stretch my paint out. <laughs> <laughs> water down the paint and it's kind of giving it a really cool effect anyway so yeah it has the whole thing out. looks terrific <laughs> well the noise is coming back so you get back to work and uh we'll go look around wait for him to come uh wreck this statue oh, thank you across the parking lot the Bellius family was carefully hoisting fred onto the saturn 5 booster base down, just a hair. down a hair. with some final welding the statue was secured to its base. Fred Hayes stood proud, backlit by the early morning sun. A shroud was placed over the statue in preparation for the reveal. Dedication day began with a luncheon at the Biloxi Visitor Center. What is that big thing? It's like, we thought it was a muffin, but it's like a bread.
followed by a parade across Highway 90 to Lighthouse Park, where hundreds gathered to participate in this historic day. Ladies and gentlemen, Apollo 13 astronaut Fred Hayes. Welcome to the dedication of the Fred Hayes statue, an important and significant landmark in Biloxi. We want to thank the Biloxi High School Air Force Junior ROTC Band. We want to thank the Gulf Coast Community College Small Band and the Perkettes. And now, please remain, please stand for the presentation of the colors. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, and the Invocation. I call forward for the Pledge of Allegiance, Jeremy Landis and Taylor Johnston. These are the nephews of Fred Hayes, and they are the grandchildren of Brenda Johnston and Billy Hayes Johnston. Yep. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the national anthem will be played by the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College Band. Now please welcome Reverend Joseph A. Delatuso for today's invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
We gather in wonder and awe at the universe that you have created, and we gather to honor the astronaut men and women who, like explorers of old, who went forth and came to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, continue to go forth unselfishly to help us better understand that universe. But today especially we gather to remember and celebrate the 50th anniversary of Apollo 13 and to honor one of its members, our own Biloxian Fred Hayes. As we dedicate this statue of him to that memory, we also thank you for his and his fellow crewmates' safe return home. May this statue remind future generations of the dedication of those who, in the words of another astronaut, continue to seek to touch the face of God. Amen. You may be seated. We had this jazz band and we told them we wanted them to play Fly Me to the Moon. And so we're going to pause just for a second here and we want to hear Fly Me to the Moon from the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College Jazz Band. Thank you. Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, of course, is the alma mater. 
or Fred Hayes. I want to recognize all the people who are on stage right now. First, I have Mike McDaniel of Infinity, chairman of the board, if you'd wave. Mr. Anthony Wilson, Mississippi Power Chief Executive Officer. From Seymour Engineering, Mark Seymour. The sculptor of the Fred Hayes statue, Marriott Trimble Davidson. <laughs> Traveling with Fred Hayes would be his granddaughter, Dakota Woodall. <laughs> And our man, Fred Hayes. We have a number of distinguished guests with us today. Don't worry, I'll get to you in a minute. We, we have a number of distinguished guests here today. We want to recognize the Hayes family. Where's the Hayes family? Come on, let's raise our hands all down here in the front row. Councilman George Lawrence, raise your hand. Councilman Felix Gines. Councilmember Paul Tisdale. Councilman Kenny Glavin, Councilman Nathan Barrett. We want to welcome Congressman Stephen Palazzo. Congressman, where are you? State Representative Kevin Felsher is with us today. From the office of Senator Roger Wicker, Chris Vines. Hello, Chris. From Keesler Air Force Base, we welcome General Michelle Edmondson. Also from Keesler, we welcome our good friend, Colonel William Hunter. From the Biloxi, Biloxi Public School District, please welcome Marcus Boudreaux. And of course, the Biloxi High Jazz Band, Dr. Mary Graham, president of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College is with us. Dr. Ladd Taylor, the Vice President of Gulf Coast Community College Perkinson Campus, as well as Dr. Cedric Bradley, the Vice President of Gulf Coast Community College Harrison County Campus. We want to thank their culinary program. We want to thank the bands. We want to thank the Perkettes. We also want to thank the people who drove Fred Hayes here from the Visitor Center to right over here, Michael and Susan Peterson. And I'm looking for Lucinda. Where's Lucinda, my artist? Lucinda, come on up here wherever you are. Ladies and gentlemen, while Lucinda makes her way up here to take a seat on the stage, I would like to call forward the man who had the vision to bring all of this together where we are here today. You can see a lot of changes along our waterfront and throughout our city, but none as more dramatic as what you're seeing right here. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mayor of Biloxi, the Honorable Andrew Fofo Gillich. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you for being here. Everybody being here. This is, I think, our first event that we had at this facility. Yes, uh, and I'm going to try and be brief, but uh, I may not. But uh, let me welcome again everyone to this dedication. The honor the amazing life and accomplishments of Biloxi and Fred Hayes. Vincent, we talked a little bit about maybe shedding a tear. Well, that was close right there. Okay. But I've already shed a tear, so that, that's already over and under is already done. But Biloxi and Fred Hayes, and I'll say the greatest Biloxi. And I know he's always been proud of Biloxi. We could be here all day if we mentioned so many things about his life, from the third grade play, where he got his nickname, Pecky, <laughs> or delivering newspapers for the Daily Herald. The one I like is watching the pool hustlers at the Union Bar. <laughs> of course, Perk, right? The Air Force, Apollo, and the Infinity Space Center. Now think about this. From the time of Adam and Eve, it's been a pretty good, pretty long ago. Only 24 people have went around that moon a mile, about 250,000 miles away. Isn't that right, Fred? So it's uh, you know that's just something that we all you know proud of. And one of them was a Biloxian. 
We're so proud and so thankful and appreciative of his family and the many friends and relatives that have played big roles and small roles in Fred's life. This has been a tough week for Fred. He lost his wife, Pat, earlier this week. And I know he, it's, it was, you know, we offer our sincerest of sympathies and condolences to you and your family. I know it's been rough to your daughter, your granddaughter. And uh, we, we love you. And, and uh, I know it, it's, it's tough, but we're certainly uh, with you and hope that we can, you know, fill in a little bit with this, this ceremony about the, the loss that you suffered. Now, talked a lot about Fred. And Fred will be the first one to tell you that he didn't do all this by himself. But if you think about the 17 missions of Apollo, you probably remember two of them, Apollo 11 and Apollo 13, right? President Kennedy said, we choose to go to the moon because it's hard, not easy. The whole world collaborated to overcome the adversity that beset Apollo 13 and bring them home. It's truly amazing. And Fred is here with us today. A term that will pop up when you're talking about supercomputers and supercomputing is massively parallel processing. And that's what happened today, over, I guess, since 2020 when we first dreamed this up. Uh, let me share a little bit about that and thank some of the people. Thank everybody that's here today. But I want to begin. Fred, we've had some of good friends, common friends. Uh, we started at the Lodge about seven years ago, uh, and you did a tremendous presentation and visited with a lot of folks he went to high school with and visited with. But at that point in town, we just, you know, every presentation he does, and you just, you just learn so much more about uh, the greatness of Fred Hayes. Well, we were coming out to Savonia Lodge, and we had a little construction going on in Biloxi. You all remember that, right? Uh, well, outside the lodge, there was a 10-foot manhole, 96-inch, excuse me, 10-foot high, 96-inch in, inside diameter that was to be inset in the ground. There's like 160 of them. So I said, we want to do something. We're going to make that look like the base of a Saturn V. And that, and that thing is 66,000 pounds, and it's not going anywhere. And, when we, uh, and Fred Hayes, you know, it, it, it's going to be there forever. Uh, so I want to thank some of these folks. Uh, design precast concrete, Pat Four and Chris Four. I went with the, the actual dimensions of the of the Saturn V. They did the fairings. They did the you know the whole uh, scheme and and uh, delivered it here. I think uh, WC Four uh, brought it over here. Of course, the the grounds that you're sitting here. I think uh, Gerald Patel, engineer Gerald Patel, and Seymour Engineering converted this. Facility from 78 parking places to 173. I think is that right, Mark? So this is the, really the first event of, a, you know, I think just a tremendous place and with the flagpole and, of course, Fred looking at Explorer Pierre Lamar de Albeville. That couldn't be any better. Now, we've had some talk about exploring, right? Well, I think uh, a historian, Dale Greenwell, mentioned, you know, about... Uh, where he landed from a Pierre Lamar de Albeville. Well, it was a little bit west of the mall. I don't know where, how he knew where the mall was going, but that's where it was. <laughs> so, but anyway, <laughs> seriously, folks, but they're back to Tally Construction. Of course, Marriott, and, and we, we went through some things uh, as, as this came to fruition, but really everybody was processing, did their part, from the time, I think the fire department sent the clay to the foundry, right? And then, uh, you know, how we got it back, John, Johnny Fayard moving storage and WC again. But the city of Biloxi, every, each and every one of the departments, I've got to thank, you know, uh, even Vincent, I got to thank him. The city, I got to thank him. <laughs> thank the PD, thank everybody, because it really is uh, talking about doing their part, parallel processing. That's what it's been. So, I want to quote, you know, Mike Leonard. I mean, it's just been day after day that you know, we, we, we just push hard and hard to get to this day. So I'm glad it's here. I even wore socks today, so that's a, a good thing. So I thank y'all for being here. I'm looking forward to revealing this at you.
I've been hearing about massive parallel processing all week, and I knew I was going to hear it today. And Fred said, what is he talking about? <laughs> I'll be fired tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, a few years ago, we wanted to do a, a tremendous exhibition down at the Oro O'Keefe Museum of Art, and it was on the 10th anniversary of Katrina. And one of the partners that was used then was one that we knew could help do something spectacular. When the mayor talked about this, we knew right away who to bring in. Please welcome from Mississippi Power, the Chief Executive Officer, Anthony Wilson. Well, good evening. Um, you know, it's a great honor to be here, and I have to say, I'm excited to be here. You know, we have Fred Hayes. Um, really, he's the, he's the Bluxy native son. He's a space pioneer, and he is a true American hero. We don't get a chance to hang out with folks like that all the time, do we? That is that's outstanding. Fred has been an inspiration uh, to generations of people. And I, I remember myself, I grew up just north of the bay, right here in Bluxy. And everybody knew who Fred Hayes was. And so it's a, it's a true honor for us all to be here with him today. He's still inspiring. I had the opportunity to visit with him just an hour or so ago. And I can tell you, he is still full of inspiring stories and uh, just just the things that he's done in his life uh, brings one to be certainly inspired to do more in their own life. So just again, just an outstanding opportunity for us all to be here with him. He's a shining example for young people, young students that study in STEM. If you apply yourself, and you work hard, it can take you to places very few people have ever been in the entire world. He's an example of that also. So Fred, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being such a great ambassador for Bluxy, for the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and for the state of Mississippi. Mayor Gillich, thank you for adding this beautiful statue to the city's landscape. It's going to provide our residents and our visitors an opportunity to learn more about the life of Fred Hayes, our favorite citizen. At Mississippi Power, we kind of think of ourselves a little bit a part of the space program. We provide the energy to Stennis, which has tested the engines to every man and woman that's ever gone to space. We're proud of that. We're proud of that partnership with NASA and we're certainly proud to be a part of this special event today. So thank you. Thank you very much. Anthony referred to how Fred Hayes has inspired so many and he continues to do, for, do so. Now I call forward the person who runs one of the most inspirational places from Infinity Science Center. Please welcome Michael McDaniel. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Fred, uh, first off, it's an honor. He's, he is definitely one of my heroes, and I really, it, it's an honor to be here. So I am the uh, chairman of the board of directors for the Infinity Science Center, and one of the uh, first things that one of the found, founding fathers of Infinity did was to ask Fred Hayes to be on the board, to serve on the board. And since 2008, Fred accepted that, and has been very much engaged in uh, speaking uh, to youth and schools. Uh, his speaking engagements, he donates his checks to Infinity to help pay the electric bill and the operating cost to keep it running because Infinity is a young science center, 10 years old, and we need that uh, sponsorship. So Fred is definitely uh, one of our heroes at the Infinity Science Center. Um, he, sci he drives from Houston several times a year to do nothing but sign autographs of people that's ordered uh, things about Fred Hayes, bobbleheads and, and, and pictures, and, and he will sit there for hours and hours and hours and autograph each one of them and personalize each one of them as, as people have requested for them, him to do. Uh, he speaks uh, in organizations globally, worldwide, 
Uh, he always talks about uh, the inspiring the youth and gives stories, as, you, as some of you heard. Uh, I had him come to our company, uh, Aerojet Rocketdyne, and talk about safety and what safety uh, is involved with with uh, space flight. And he uh, did that for us and uh, very inspirational and, and really just drives the culture. He reviews the detailed plans of all the exhibits that come into Infinity Science Center, looking at both to, to is it inspirational? Is it the right one, uh, exhibits to show? And then also, what's the maintenance cost and the maintaining of those exhibits? And it really helps Infinity that way. Uh, he's also uh, shares uh, best practices across the, uh, the when, when, when he's uh, coming to talk to us or coming on the board of directors and, and, and giving the board guidance and, and the coaching of what we need to be doing to look like a big science center. Some of these, he's involved with all the science centers across the nation, several of them across the world, and he brings that experience and that expertise to us at Infinity and makes us a better science center. So thank you, sir. As you know, uh, he, uh, Apollo 13, uh, uh, as you've already heard, all the engines that were on the Apollo program and on the shuttle program, but on the Apollo program and Apollo 13, those five engines that Fred uh, flew on uh, was actually flight certified tested just down the road at the uh, Stennis Space Center. So um, uh, it's really Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. And, and, and that's uh, a, it's a lot of pride for us, and it's a lot of pride for us to, as you heard, that. Uh, as Von Braun said uh, in one of his speeches, don't know how we're going to get to the moon, but we're going to have to go to Mississippi to get there. So it's... <laughs> so on behalf of the Infinity Science Center Board of Directors and on the Infinity Science Center staff and on uh, South Mississippi and NASA's Visitor Center, uh, uh, we really are proud of you, Mr. Hayes. Uh, you are a hero. You are my hero. And uh, it's a well-deserved uh, recognition. So, thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to take a small little bit of detour right here, and the reason we're going to do that is because we have someone who has had Fred Hayes in her house for the last two years, and uh, there is a Fred Hayes statue. Excuse me. A, statue right across the highway for the explorer Pierre Lemoyne d'Iberville. That statue was dedicated exactly 23 years ago today on February 13th, 1999. That was the 300th anniversary of the founding of Biloxi. When we went to do a statue of Fred Hayes, there was no debate about it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the sculptor of the Fred Hayes statue, Marriott Trimmel Davidson. Tell them about that statue. Tell them what they're going to see. As a native Biloxian, I'm so thankful to the mayor and the city of Biloxi for giving me this opportunity to create this wonderful individual in his astronaut outfit. When it comes to making a statue, there's many stages. And the first step deals with the clay. You make an armature out of wood and then you get this clay. Well, this clay is massive, it's thick, it's hard to work with, and you need help. Well, I was starting and I was well underway, and then I got detoured for a while when I had to deal with a cancer problem. And there I found so many wonderful individuals to help me, my family, but most of all, my husband. I had friends. I even had former students come and help me roll out the clay so I could finish it. It's been a two years, but it's been a wonderful journey, and I thank you all because this has been a community affair for me and for you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We acknowledged a lot of people earlier, and uh, there's somebody else that I really want to acknowledge. There have been a lot of people who are familiar with a, the Apollo program. Gene Kranz. A lot of people know Gene Kranz. As a, our guy, who our Gene Kranz was, our flight director, was a guy named Bobby Weaver, right over there. Raise your hand, Bobby. 
He made sure with Dan Bellius that that statue is going nowhere. So what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to introduce the person who is going to tell you about Fred Hayes before we hear from Fred. But when Fred finishes talking, we're going to move right over there. Fred's going to move over there. The sculptor's going to move over there. And the mayor's going to move over there. And anybody here been to Grauman's Chinese Theater out in Hollywood? Nobody. <laughs> That's two. Fred has made such a mark on Biloxi that he's going to make another one right over there in the concrete. He's going to put his handprint and he's going to sign his name. How about that? Right after that, we're going to unveil the statue. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring forward now a lifelong friend of Fred Hayes who is going to introduce our hero. Please welcome James Garner. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm honored today to introduce my lifelong friend, Fred Hayes. You know Fred from his many accomplishments and as a Marine Corps fighter pilot, a test pilot, an astronaut, an Apollo 13 mod uh, module uh, pilot. But I want you to know the Fred Hayes that I knew growing up. The mayor stole a little bit of my thunder, but that's okay, mayor. We'll just repeat it. The Bluxy boy that grew up on Church Street and attended Gornflow Elementary School, Bluxy Junior High School, Bluxy High School, and Perkinson Junior College. So we were together through, through all of that. Fred was a year younger than the rest of the class, which means he accomplished many things a lot earlier in his life than we did. He was still 16 when he graduated from Bluxy High School. While Fred was at Gornflow, Fred acquired the nickname Pecky. And uh, that was because he played a woodpecker in a, in a class play. But that nickname stuck with him until he graduated from, uh, from Perk. And I don't know, after that, uh, he picked up some other, other nicknames, I'm sure. It appeared that uh, Fred was destined to be a journalist. It started out when he became a paper boy delivering the Luxie Herald on his bicycle. And later, after making a little money, he bought himself a Cushman scooter. And he could be seen riding around Biloxi. And I had the opportunity to ride behind him there several times. And we, uh, we got around Biloxi. That was the only transportation that we had. The Bluxy High Echo, the 1950 senior class prophecy, published this about Fred. It said Fred Hayes was recently appointed editor of the Chicago Herald Tribune. So, so much for prophecies, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> As we graduated from, from uh, Bluxy, uh, from Perk, Excuse me. Fred uh, became a sports editor for the Bluxy High Tide and also covered many of the Bluxy football games as a reporter for the Herald. I found a newspaper clipping with the Fred Hayes byline. Now, a 16-year-old reporter with a byline back in those days was a big deal. The headline was, Macomb defeats the underdog tribe by 12 to 7 margin. But I can tell you, Fred was always very generous in his exploits, uh, reporting on the different members of the team. Uh, he pointed out good runs by John Radish and Ellsworth Sachs, Billy Hollis, and Norman Broussard. And I saw Norman a while ago. Uh, it also even mentioned an old friend of his for catching a pass to keep a drive going. But he was also very generous in praising the team, even in a losing effort. Later at uh, Perkinson Junior College, Fred became the makeup editor and the sports editor for the Bulldog Barks. He finally served as the new, uh, newspaper editor in his senior year. As we graduated in 1952 from Perk, everyone went their separate ways pursuing their own uh, careers. 
Fred's journalism ambition gave way to other interests, and he became a naval aviation cadet, a marine pilot, and an astronaut. So now you know the rest of the story. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to present my friend and Bluxy's favorite son, Frederick Wallace Hayes, Jr. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, this is such an incredible day. Uh, uh, thank you all for coming out. One person missed I'd like to introduce that also made the long drive from Houston over here was a uh, daughter, Angela, sit, sitting on the ground out, out in front here. Uh, she, made, she made a long drive from Houston as I, as I did uh, yesterday. Uh, this, this is just profound. Uh, I, uh, I was fortunate very fortunate and blessed to have a long, uh, interesting, rewarding uh, career, uh, which I didn't do on my own, as mentioned before. I, I hope this statue, uh, and it's probably uh, uh, going to get uh, weathered after a while with uh, hurricanes and, and whatever. Uh, I hope not too weathered. But uh, there will be a school projects, I hope, because Fred Hayes will be forgotten. And uh, they will uh, maybe... Children may not like it, but they may be given school projects to figure out what, who was this guy, uh, who, who was Fred Hayes. And I hope as they uh, check through Google or, or whatever means there are for acquiring that kind of information, even I won't advertise, but I'm writing a I've written a book uh, with the Smithsonian Press that's coming out in April. And it tells a lot about my time early Biloxi. And I hope they see that what that was, uh, how it was growing up here. It was a small town. Uh, it was uh, all through the school system. And in elementary school, even uh, when you're very young, second, third, fourth grade, uh, I was free to roam. Uh, at, uh, the schoolyard was your playground. And I could stay after school or come down to the beach all on my own. Uh, the only rule was I had to be home for dusk, for, for supper time. And I was free to go anywhere. And that was all the way through uh, school at that time. So that's kind of small town uh, environment uh, I grew up in, which was great. Uh, the, uh, the time came of World War II, uh, earlier mentioned by the mayor uh, in a previous talk, where this place grew up, uh, Count Gulfport Field in Keesler, to uh, over 100,000 uh, Army, Army airmen at that time. Air Force had not arrived yet. And I uh, hope to see this, this young fellow took advantage of that. And my dad made me a shoebox, and I bought a black and brown polish and a rag and a brush. And I shine shoes. Uh, these airmen needed to shine shoes, so I shined them for a nickel. Now, a nickel may not seem much, but at that time, you could buy five Tootsie Rolls <laughs> for a nickel. Or you could get an RC Cola. I mean, so, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was good to employment. And that continued, as mentioned, uh, with uh, the journalism uh, business uh, uh, and uh, the, the son, uh, Bloxy Gulfport Daily Herald, which was owned by one of my, uh, I call it mentors, A.P. Wilkes. Uh, he was the owner. He was also my uh, scout leader in uh, Troop 212. And he was a great man, and uh, I learned a lot through the scouting program. But he's also my boss. He... Uh, created this uh, program for newsboys where we had to buy the newspapers. Uh, we delivered them six days a week, no Sunday paper. And uh, we got uh, 20 cents a week. Uh, we had to pay the Herald 12 cents a week. That's what it cost us, two cents a paper. So we made eight cents uh, on each uh, customer. And I had the route from about Main Street to uh, Cruces and uh, and I had 100, about 170 papers average, 170 customers. So I, I, was, I was like $17, $14 a week. So I was really getting up in the world when I had that uh, newspaper out. And later became a, uh, uh, a what, what they call an office boy. I, and I don't know if Freddie Simwinder made it here today. I invited Freddie. Yeah, OK. And we were, uh, we were two office boys under Joe Wink. Joe Wink was the uh, head office boy. 
and we basically were responsible for split the city in half, and we each had half the city to know the routes in case the boy became sick or wanted to take a vacation or whatever. So uh, I moved up then uh, to uh, minimum wage, I think it was 50 cents an hour uh, at that time. So I was, uh, again, getting, getting up, at, moving up in the world as, as an office boy. Uh, but I, like I said, I had uh, great mentors throughout school with the teachers. Uh, just w one thing, that the, re the reason the name Pecky, just to take that a little further, I was not uh, good with uh, music. Uh, in the rhythm band, uh, which only involved the beat and rulers together, or a, a triangle, or if you're really good, you got a tambourine, they made me the band leader, because that way I didn't have to play anything. And then at the uh, PTA meetings or whatever, when we played, I just had to stand in front and wave a wand, but they didn't pay attention to me. They watched the teachers down below to for the, for the, keep the music straight. And the same way in that musical mention, they made me the woodpecker because I didn't have to sing. All I had to do was dance around an Indian, and then it's part of the, uh, the show. And I got the name Pecky because uh, teachers decided maybe they shouldn't have given me that job. I was always running around pecking on the girls with the beak on my, uh, my <laughs> and she decided that was probably a mistake to uh, give me that job. But, but at any rate, it was, uh, I was enjoyed it. And a lot, a lot of the ca character, discipline, whatever, I, I grew up through this environment uh, here and through, uh, as, as mentioned, all the way through uh, what was in the only campus, Perkinson uh, Junior College at the time. Uh, but it's, uh, I was uh, obviously had the help of those mentors along the way, and as I went on through life, uh, it, both in the military and with NASA 20 years, uh, same way. There was a lot of, a lot of people uh, behind what I did or others did, at least those that were flying, either airplanes or, as the case, uh, in space. But I hope they, uh, they, look, they get to reading that story that there was a lot of hard work, uh, you had to have a, a discipline, you had to have a goal, and uh, work, work toward that goal. And I try to emphasize uh, the children I speak to that we are all blessed with talent. Uh, it varies, uh, the, the, whether we're the musician side or the engineer side, but we all have talent. And I encourage them to try to figure that out. Uh, so sometimes it's difficult to figure out what you really, how you want to use it. But to work hard at figuring that out and how best to make the use of the talent you've been blessed with in birth and make, uh, make the best of uh, your life a productive, uh, enjoyable uh, uh, life. In my case, quite an exciting life. So anyway, I thank, I thank again the, the sponsors, uh, and particularly Mississippi Power, actually, who was a great sponsor to get us started with Infinity Science Center when we uh, were just getting off the ground uh, back then. Uh, they, were, they were a big sponsor to help us out, and uh, all, of, all of you who, who come out to see uh, this Biloxi boy uh, who uh, just grew up here and got to do some great things. Thank you. All right, we're going to go this way now. We're going to go put your, uh, put your hand in print. Mayor, and you. Listen, I got one thing. Uh, you know, Biloxi's got a lot of cool things, right? We got our own White House. We got uh, uh, the Holy Land. We got our own Holy Land. And uh, uh, along those same lines, uh, a while back, one of my relatives, we, Biloxi had uh, won an award for uh, ending homelessness for veterans. And I said, we're getting ready to one of my cousins. I said, we're getting ready to go to the White House and have lunch with the First Lady. And she said, oh, I didn't know she was coming to Biloxi. <laughs> but but along those lines, I had a comment that one of my relatives, but anyway, we talked about Fred Hayes and the dedication of the statue. And uh, one of my friends was saying, listen, I am so excited. I, I, you know, if I come down here, you think I could ask him how it was, how it was to work with Tom Hanks in the movie? <laughs> Go over there. Okay, the first thing is Fred's going to put his handprint right here in the cement. He's going to sign his name. And while we're doing that, and before we unveil the statue, let me tell you about something else that nobody knows about except for you that are right here today. 
This is Lucinda Pinachero Winfant. She is the creator of the moonwalk behind us. You have heard references to Pecky, Pecky, Pecky. Tell them what you put in that statue and the uh, moonwalk. I have hidden 13 woodpeckers back there. You have to try to find them, but they're hidden there and I thought it was something cool to do and kind of add in there. The other thing that she did was that this area right over here, right behind the statue, depicts the area of where Apollo 13 was scheduled to land. So there are a lot of things behind us with this moonwalk, with the kiosks that we have over there. We're hoping we have somebody coming to town. This right here is where you want to bring them. Would you agree, Congressman? Thank you. Fred Hayes has made his mark on Biloxi. And now we're going to set everybody up to unveil the statue. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Look at that. Welcome back to Biloxi, Fred Hayes. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank all of you for coming today. Please enjoy the statue, take a walk on the moonwalk, and have a great day. Believe it, that's for sure. Two years in the making. Well, how do you feel about it today? Um, very excited, very pleased. I think the crowd showed up for it. Yes, that's wonderful. Considering all this cold weather, my goodness, all these brave Biloxians. It's a great day. Congratulations to you. Thank you, dear.